and we've got actually one big topic we're going to start off with um, the Montreal Canadiens and Mark Bergevin being fired. Mm-hmm. Um, now I'm I am the resident Habs fan here, and uh, overall, Bergevin just going to say thank you for your tenure in Montreal. I think it's been fantastic. He has been over 500, has done great deals. Maybe two of them have been bad in terms of trades. Maybe two contracts are bad, but you never have a perfect record. And I think he, for what he was tasked to do, we're talking about a market that's both French and English, being pulled apart from two sides at all times. And it's something that's very unique in this market. It's the only one that has this problem so they have to face they have to have much more paperwork than other teams they need to face much more scrutiny from from french people who think they they have the right to have french players on their team they're very or french speaking uh management or whatever i feel as though he for all of these restrictions that you could think about for the montreal canadians he has done a fantastic job honestly yeah Hey, you know what, man? You said it. You said it perfectly there. Like, it's it's no easy job to be the GM or president of the Montreal Canadiens, and it's not one that I am envious of him that he had that job because it's like I said, yeah, very difficult. The media there puts on tons of pressure. The fans put on a ton of pressure as well. Like you said, with them being the only like main like French speaking team in the league, like there's also a lot of pressure that comes with that. And yeah, I mean, he's handled it well. He's he's always been a stylish guy. You see him showing yeah. up to games in the playoffs. That red suit it worked its magic for him. Another thing I loved about him was that like he was he was in better shape than like he was in really good shape. Like that, that guy's arms were just massive. Like yeah, you, you did not want to screw with, fight with him. Absolutely, no, you got exactly. that right. Absolutely. Uh, he I was... still remember. Oh, sorry. Oh. Go ahead. Oh yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say I still, I still remember there was a. Uh, a little side sidetrack here, but there's a team that we'd always come up against in uh, EASHL on like the old NA, on like NHL 20 or whatever. And this the team name was just Le Gros Brad de Bergevin. <laughs> Brad? The, like Brad, like arms. Oh, the, Brad I, Bergevin. I, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, the, it was basically yeah. the big arms of Bergevin. It was <laughs> the team name, but it was in French, and I, it was hilarious for me. <laughs> Such a strong team, I bet. <laughs> uh, we beat them a lot. Oh, six. <laughs> Well, um, he definitely had a better hand in real life. Um, Mm -hmm. Of course, we can have a look at his tenure more in depth. Um, And also what actually happened. um, He was fired when he had COVID. Because that that came out. Uh, He has COVID. And not only he was fired, but the assistant uh, general manager was fired. uh, As well as... Trevor Timmons, but they were saying that there was a guy who had resigned. I thought that he was the assistant general manager, and I thought Trevor Timmons was the head of scouting. Yeah, I'm uh, not exactly sure who was where in Montreal, but uh, can I have a yeah, look you at can that. find that. So, yeah, there was a few other people. Trevor Timmons, um, of course, he was fired after 20 years of service. Again, a guy who drafted P.K. Subban, Carey Price, um, and who else? Max Petretti, did I say that? No, I didn't. Uh, yes. No, no, you didn't, actually. Sorry. Gallagher. Yeah, you got great names there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, Trevor Timmons, Paul Wilson, gone. Paul Wilson, funny enough, I told, I've told told this uh, many times to Steven. He has good relations with my father and his brother. We know his family quite well. Uh, there you go. Assistant GM Scott Mellenby. He resigned. That was it. Scott Mellenby, yes. Because yes. he was hired uh, shortly after Bergevin in 2012, uh, May of 2012. He was supposed to take the reins from Bergevin when, it fin- when he finished his contract. That was who mm-hmm. Bergevin wanted uh thing to take. But then Molson did a little turn. And said, I'm going to go get Jeff Gordon, who has a great track record so far, a great hockey mind, good at rebuilding. You, can, you saw it with New York Rangers. And he mm-hmm. did some pretty 
big trades. I think was he with Boston? I believe. Uh oh. Remember, I sent you that screenshot. I forgot where that was. Oh boy. I remember I... seeing on Twitter. This is very crucial here. One second. There you go. Um, yeah, he was. He started in Boston. Um, yes. He dropped yeah, a Kessel, Lucic, Marshan, and traded for Rask. So that's mm-hmm. there. You go. He signed Chara and Savard. Uh, did great as GM in New York as well. And I thought that he did do a good job. And getting him getting fired was very strange. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's also just James Dolan being James Dolan. Uh, right like i mean case. yeah he didn't agree with um his stance on his stance with when it came to the whole tom wilson and um artevi panarin incident la- late last season so yeah that was um that's just james dolan being himself and being like nope this is my team and we're doing things my way <laughs> yeah and that's okay we ended uh, the montreal Canadiens end up with jeff gordon yeah hey man and- their loss is your game that's abs- absolutely right now. The question remains uh, for what will happen to the general manager position. Um, of course, we, we haven't even looked at the tenure from Bergevin, but we're just getting rid of what for today, or not for mm-hmm. today, but most recently, what's the situation and then looking at him. Um, no, no current job or even idea of who's going to be in GM position, but we know that he's going to be splitting it with jeff gordon um yeah he, he's gonna be hockey vp but that doesn't mean anything it's it's he's gonna be sharing that responsibility of managing the team with the general manager people are comparing it a little bit to the way the raptors are looking like but i don't think so either because masai ujiri he's he he's more the front of the the team but I believe yeah. in this case, I think they're going to be more working together and to try to figure out instead of Masai Ujiri being the guy who's at the end of the day making the decisions. Because well, I, I, mean, I, I don't, the market, the, Montreal, the, the Canadians market will not like that. They would not like that. That's a fair point. But I also, I was going to say too, like, I mean, like the GM, obviously they're going to bring in someone who's French speaking because Jeff Gordon doesn't speak French himself, which yes. we, which I actually learned about yesterday. So obviously it needs to be someone who speaks French, which makes you actually a good candidate in my eyes. <laughs> oh, thank you, Stephen. Oh, thank <laughs> I mean, you so much. You, you've got to leg up on like so many other people just because you can speak French. <laughs> That's right. I can just, just for... call up Jeff Molson and be like, yo, dude, can I'm your you, guy. You can hire me, bro. Hire me. S- send him our GM mode videos. <laughs> I'm sure he'll look at that and say, no, (laughs) No, he would hire a twig before he hire me. That's for sure. But yeah. So anyways, going back to that, like, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised either if it is like just because Jeff Gordon, like he's, he's a very brilliant mind in hockey. So I wouldn't even be surprised if he's the one calling the shots. And then the GM is just kind of there to do like the press conferences and speak French and just keep the media happy and the fans happy in that way. And if it is going to be that, <clears throat> I, I guess one thing we can kind of get to this now before again, we just push back looking at Bergman's time in Montreal, like there's the, the rumors and the constant rumors about Patrick Waugh being linked with this job. Yeah. So I just kind of wanted to get your opinion on what you thought of that. And, you know, do you believe there's any truth to it? Do you think it'll happen? Do you want it to happen? You know, just let no, me know. I, people can say all they want about Patrick Wall, but they've seen it when they were, when he was in Colorado. Um, I saw it when he was in Colorado that he wasn't really fit for a managerial position. He's not fit for that. And he, he won't take commands from people. If he's a general manager, he'll be like, uh, what is his name? Uh, the former general manager for Vancouver, Brian Burke. There you go. Mm, Um, mm -hmm. you know, he'll tell you to screw off. I'll tell you to. Oh yeah, he won't be afraid to yeah. to say anything to anyone. Patrick like we, we've seen worse. Raw. Yeah, he, he's he's quite a hothead. He's I mean, like you said, we saw him. Oh yeah, we saw him behind the bench, like you said, in Colorado. Like his first game, he was getting into it with Bruce Boudreaux, nearly tucked down like the the partition in the middle of the benches just to get to this guy. He would have fought him if he wanted to. He's not. He's not what 
Montreal needs. They need something calm, something mm-hmm. young. <laughs> yeah. What, I think what we're looking at is a situation of Lou Lamorello and Kyle Dubas. We're getting okay. Lou Lamorello is our Jeff Gordon, and then we're getting a guy who's eventually going to take up the mantle of actually being general manager. Right. You know, maybe. Who also speaks French. Because they're looking at, yeah, that's right. It ha- well, it has to be French. You have to speak yeah. French. It's necessary that you understand the French language and the French culture. That's also very important. The culture specifically in Quebec. Uh, don't mm-hmm. get someone from France, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think Thierry Henry will uh, be the right guy for the no, job. <laughs> don't think so. And I think Daniel Briere has a better chance of being the general manager for the Montreal Canadiens than Patrick Waugh does. Because he's got, he's such a... He's been with the Montreal Canadiens. He mm-hmm. has a good rapport with the Montreal Canadiens. He never was in a limelight of bad reason. He, he's easy to talk to. He's easy to yeah, look at as well. as well. Yeah, you know, like he would be a perfect guy to stay, to be in there and take all the questions anybody has. And I'm sure he, he could grow. He has potential. Mm-hmm. And I think he's currently in the QMJHL. I'm not sure where he is, but I think he is the general manager of a uh, hockey organization I'm just gonna double check on that he he has been reported to be linked to the Montreal Canadiens and the you know just as the Patrick Roy rumors are around I can't mm-hmm. seem to find anything where he currently is yeah I can't really seem to find anything I'm looking on well, it that's Wikipedia that's okay. well you know Let's see if I can find it over here. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, he has been running the main Mariners of the ECHL. Okay. 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 There we go. So, so he is he's currently in a management job, which is good. Yes, it's a good step. And I think I don't know how long he's been there for. Uh played the Twitter for the Guineans, been running I think since oh there it goes, since twenty seventeen. So that's a lot of time. You know, it's not a high position it's not a high league, sorry, but at least it's in the world. He speaks French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, too. That's, th- a, that's another thing, too, right? Mark Bergevin you, you never know. was a general manager. Until yeah, look, then. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. He was an assistant, though, like in yeah. Chicago. Well, he was yeah, there. he started player management, and then he went to, to assistant after. Um, yeah. During the whole Kyle Beach saga. Well, we won't talk about Kyle Beach today. This uh, It's not... It's not part of it. Maybe it'll be part of his legacy, Mark Bergevin, uh, untold mm-hmm. legacy. But uh, yeah, the that GM position needs to be filled in as soon as possible. Um, that's what Jeff Molson wants. If mm-hmm. he knows that there's going to be a better option in the offseason, he will wait. So same goes with the coaching. If it doesn't need to be changed, don't change it. You know, they are, still have Claude Julien's co- contract to pay for. Maybe Mark, uh, Michel Terrien as well. So <laughs> they they yeah. still have to pay those off. And I'm sure they don't want to pay more for another coach. So, yeah, as much as the Montreal Canadiens are made of money, they, they don't they don't want to spend it on those things either. <laughs> no, they've they want to revamp, though. They say that they want to have a better culture especially if you're looking at the Logan Mayu uh, incident. Mm-hmm. You also have the mental health of Carey Price, Jonathan Drouin, um, a very important piece, pieces to your organization that you want to make sure that are focused and healthy and ready to play at all times. We're talking about Carey oh, yeah. Price here, who is regarded as one of the best goaltenders still alive to date. Mm-hmm. You know, like he's he's one of those guys who will end up in Hall of Fame easily, even if he doesn't win a cup. I think that's pretty oh, yeah. much uh, clear cut. Anyone could agree with that. Um, he's maybe in the top ten for best goalies in the to ever play. Some some could argue oh, top five. Sure. I, 
I think top 10 for sure, easily, you give him that. I mean, he's got the two Olympic gold medals as well. Or no, one Olympic gold medal. Sorry, he wasn't he wasn't on the team in 2010. But 2014, he was obviously the backbone of that team with two shutouts in the elimination rounds and only allowing one goal, and it was against Latvia. Shut out the Americans in the semis. Shut out the Swedes in the finals. Like, what else could you ask for? He played boring hockey and made the men look like children. Yeah, I mean, he also made really good chances just look easy and That's calm, right. which he has. He has that calming factor, which, like, you see in the playoffs, too. You can just, like, he can just calm everyone around him because he's like, guys, don't worry, I got this. And it makes everyone else feel good about themselves and reassure that, yeah, we got the goalie to backstop us so we can do what we want, as like, up front and just play the way we want to and enforce our style of play. It, he makes the team around him better. So we're hope I so the hope for Jeff Molson is to make sure that if we ever get another carry price, we don't screw it up like this whole fiasco. Because <laughs> half his career he didn't play. Carey Price no. did not play. If he did, sometimes maybe he wasn't in the right mindset. Halak took over and he did really well. But uh, we're gonna go right now into Bergevin's tenure, and we'll be talking yes. more in depth of Carey Price and whatnot. Um, it's Steven, ask me or start going off and we can All right. talk about um, it. Yeah, so just a couple trades that I kind of wanted to go through here. I mean, this one, this one isn't a huge one, but it will be huge later on and you'll see why. Um, I mean, acquiring Dale Weiss for Rafael Diaz may seem like nothing at the time, right? Yep. But then you look later... At what he ended up doing with Dale Weiss. Uh, let me just try finding it for a second. Thomas Fleischman. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, it was just Thomas Fleischman and Dale Weiss for Philip Deneau and a second round pick. Like, pretty solid deal if you ask me. <laughs> Again, I, I said it before. He Mark Bergevin has done many great deals, and you start from uh, tra- drafting because one of the first things he did was drafting uh, Alex Galchenyuk. That too, yeah. That was one of his first that, Yeah, you're right. That would have been his first draft, 2012. So Galchenyuk came on, and he was a, he was a big a big deal. He was He's still currently the points leader, I believe, for that draft class. Because Neil yep, Yakupov was true. right. I think Neil Yakupov yeah. was first, right? And then who was second? Ryan Murray. Uh, second was Ryan Murray, yeah. yeah. Four, third was Galchenyuk. Fourth, Griffin Reinhardt. Fifth, Morgan Riley. Sixth, Hampus Lindholm. Um, then, like, you got Dumba after there. Like, yeah, I mean, may, like, Riley might, like, this is off topic, but Riley could actually end up being I, one I of the best players from that de- draft class. Those defensemen, you said Dumba, Lindholm, and Riley will definitely be the top point producers for that draft. I think Gautier oh yeah, well, just the top players. Maybe not point producers because they are defensemen in the end. Yeah, well, it depends. But, yeah. if Galchenyuk, you know, most of the forwards have, although it might be, oh, you're... might be missing on some, but. Well, yeah, you're right. Their careers like could be cut short. Like, I mean, Yakupov's NHL career is already done. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that Galchenyuk's it's not looking great either. He's in the so... NHL, so that's he is, good. but. Again, it's not I like don't know. I mean, he's uh... trying. He's trying to stay in. I, I give him credit. I liked him last year on the Leafs. Uh, anyways, getting off topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. Um, what's another one we could look at? Um, there was PK I mean, Subban, okay. the big, the yeah, biggest the, trades. Oh yeah, the Weber for Subban. Yeah, just one for one. Uh, acquiring Andrew Shaw for two seconds at the time didn't. Don't, I don't know. I didn't like it. I was no. like, why is he doing that? Well, he never he never ended up playing as well. So no, uh, he traded Lars Eller for two seconds and as well, which ended up helping the well, Capitals that's... win a cup. Yeah, Lars Eller was a big piece for that. We liked mm-hmm. Lars Eller. There was a lot of people oh, who did. I yeah. liked him too, and I was a Leaf, and I'm a Leaf fan. Not wow. I was a Leaf fan. I still am. <laughs> <laughs> I remember because when he was with the Habs, he wore 81 and. Kessel was on the Leafs at the time, and I'm like, oh, they have an 81 as well. <laughs> so he just stuck out just like that, and also like just the way he plays. I'm like, damn, like this guy's actually a good player. I like him. He's like Joel Armia or a, or a knockoff of Philip Deno. Yeah, that that's a good way of putting it, actually. I'm looking at this page here. Uh, from 20... 
sorry, from 2012-2017, Bergevin, Bergevin's Canadians went 210, uh, 210 wins, 128 losses, 38 overtime for a 609 point percentage. And mm-hmm. then from 2017 to 2021, his team went 134, 137, and 43 for a four point, uh, 495 point percentage. So, yeah, I mean, I do, I do remember those first, like that first half that you talked about. Like, I do remember them always being a solid playoff team, and I mean, going far in the playoffs too. And then, yeah, like toward, yeah, like the back half, it's it's been really pretty rough, and that's usually when we've gotten the discussions coming up about like, oh, is his job on the line? And you know, finally, the cork came out of the bottle, and it was his time to leave. I mean, that wasn't the right expression for me to use, but. No. Yeah, it's, it's still one. Out of that, like those records, the first piece you went to the Eastern Conference, okay, mm-hmm. and then that second piece you made it to the Stanley Cup Finals. That is true. So whether or not you have a good win record or not, you know, you still you can still make it to the playoffs, right? Just, oh yeah, that's the thing, right? Like I mean. Good. Obviously, that record's over multiple years, so there was a lot of bad years in there, but then there was also some pretty good ones, and then obviously playoff results don't go to that record either. So, yeah, yeah. it's 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 kind of hard to judge a team based off that, but that's why you got to look at the bigger picture like we are, right? He, like you can't just look at these these stats, that right. like these fine stats. you got to kind of look at everything. The whole picture. It, mm-hmm. All around, he did, a wonder, he did wonders for the Montreal Canadiens, bringing in... Um, well, sorry, he inherited Max Pacioretty, Brennan Gallagher, Rene Bohr, Brian Gianta. Then he left, he leaves the Montreal Canadiens with Gallagher, Josh Anderson, Tyler Toffoli, Jonathan Drouin, Cole Caulfield, and many others. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, one of which is Nick Suzuki from, yeah, wouldn't you know it, Max Pacioretty. <laughs> so, you know, of course they have some pretty bad trades. We've mentioned them with Jonathan Drouin, Sergachev. There was also what was a bad one. What was the other one? Uh, I forgot about I'm the other. Still three. searching right now. We're uh, we talking about it. Jesus, what is it? I know. I, I just I should have written them down. Well, oh. uh, <laughs> sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it was. What was the bad trade? What was the bad trade? My God, I I, I had it, and then that. Uh... Well, I, I can't find any bad ones right now, but I mean, I'm finding like there, so. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I got it. I got it. Okay. It's the uh, the the seconds for Shaw because one of those oh, for seconds Shaw. Right, turned right. out to be Alex DeBrincat. Yes. And he yeah, he's that's... been solid for Chicago, but not this year. That one though, you can also like. I mean, as much as that one, yes, they created the pick that became him. You can also put that down to just Chicago scouting being better than. Perhaps. Everyone else is for realizing that that guy was available in the second round. This is true. This is true. Um, but yeah, just more of the good, I guess. Really, like Galchenyuk for Domi, that was a good one at the time. Yep. Um, I haven't gotten to it yet, but I know I'm going to be close to it. Uh, oh, well, here's one. I mean, the whole Pacioretty thing. Everyone knew he was going to get traded, and then you end up getting Tatar, Suzuki. And a second round pick all in return for him. Like I feel like I remember people at the time were saying like, oh, like it wasn't a first and it was only a second, but like at that point, it's like you're you're really just like you're picking at hairs at that point. Like you already got a top prospect, you already got a roster player. The second round pick, I don't even think they ended up using. I think they might Tatar have traded was not it a later. roster player. He was a question mark because Vegas wasn't even using him. It was, well, yeah, yeah. which that's another one. They they Vegas traded a first, second, and third for him at the the previous year's deadline. Wow. And then it was almost like he just didn't fit in with that team because they didn't use him in the playoffs. Yeah. But then it's just like I don't know. He went to the Habs and he became a solid player. And we all, I think, a lot of people will remember the guy at the Habs game going, point at the camera, going ta ta. Like yes, what a guy. <laughs> yes, yes. There was a lot of. The team last year was such a great experience. I'll never forget it, and I can't thank him enough for that experience. I think any any team would take the opportunity, hands down, to go to the Stanley Cup Finals. Even if they don't make it, they would they would sacrifice a year to to do it. They would, mm-hmm. you know. I'm sure at least fans are kicking at themselves if they if they had traded um, 
this year's success for a chance for Stanley Cup Finals last year, they would have done it as well. Would you have done that? Um, if 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 you I mean, if you were like if oh. the Leafs were the Montreal Canadiens at this at this point, but they actually made it to the Stanley Cup Finals, would you as a Leafs fan be happy still, even if your team is doing poorly this year? It's tough because we're in a different boat. But you um, made you made it past the first round. You make make it past the Habs. You go oh, all the oh, way yeah. to the finals. I mean, you go to the finals versus Tampa, okay. right? But yeah, you lose you against. Still lose. The, well, you actually, it's a 50-50. You don't know. You don't know because it hasn't happened. No, 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 no. Let Let's go with the storyline that they still, still lose. lose. Okay. And now this year the Leafs are starting off really just, bad, like yes. the bottom so, five. So so yeah, the the question is, if you just had the chance, oh. chance to be at the finals, would you sacrifice it? Would you sacrifice a year of just being shit the year after? Would you do that? Oh, man. Just one I year, mean, though. One year. It's, uh, I'll say yes. I'll just say, yeah, why not? Cause like you, you, I'll go with it. The opportunity for your players to go into the finals, that that, that experience, mm-hmm. that's how you... Just that's the thing. I've never experienced that as a Leaf exactly. fan, like you said. Yeah. Like, yeah, that would be nice. Just, to, I mean, again, I haven't seen them win a round in nearly twenty years. So it's a lot of good and a lot of bad, but all around the future is looking bright for the Montreal Canadiens. Mm-hmm. We could look at the past and oh, sorry, go ahead. One that we did leave out, and this is a pretty big one: the Jeff Petrie trade. Oh yes, acquiring him for only a second and a fourth. That one and the Philip Deno one. Yeah. Are, oh, yeah, are the two best trades. And, I mean, you could throw in the Nick Suzuki one in there, too. That one, for sure. And his mm-hmm. his waiver uh, acquisitions that he would, he would go around and pick up random guys. Um, Lekkanen, people people you didn't know about. Armia, of course, he was pretty big in Winnipeg, but he was mm-hmm. very solid for the Montreal Canadiens for the playoff run. Um, Josh Anderson, we already talked about him. Tyler Toffoli, a great free agency acquisition. There's a lot of good things, and the worst thing is Logan Mayu probably. Logan Mayu and drafting yeah. that, and the way that they handled it was pretty piss poor. That's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Overall, I give Mark Bergevin in eighty-five percent. Eighty-five percent, okay. Yeah, not bad. I mean. Yeah, I'll I'll agree with that. I mean, I'll go with what you're saying. He like just from an outsider's view of the Habs, like yeah, he's he's made some good moves, he's made some bad ones, but all GMs do. But in the end, he's seen quite a bit of playoff success, which is very important. Yep. He's been at the helm of the Habs for nearly a decade, which is something in itself to last in that environment for that long. It, it really tells you a lot about the kind of guy he was and just kind of how much people liked him there and you know it's it was nice to see but yeah eventually it was time to move on and we'll see what jeff gordon can do and who they'll hire as their new gm it's also how he le- leaves the team right the team is in good condition it's not it, it, even if yes they're not great in the standings although they've been winning these last few games uh, mm-hmm. even uh, around this turmoil they're still doing okay um they are left with a lot of good prospects that just need to be put together maybe better and more support for the young players because their development so far has been a little bit weak and hopefully whoever they bring up GM wise can maybe focus on making sure that players aren't being pushed up too quickly and are taken care of more closely one to one these high high talent players need to be Ryan Poeling, you know, like that guy was looked at as a potential top six center, but he's turned out not too great. He's not, not hot. Nick Suzuki and maybe Cole Caulfield is your only prospects for this team. And that's really sad. The other guy, you got, you got a few defensemen that are in the back there that are potentials for two, three years from now, but those are the guys, Nick Suzuki and Caulfield are the guys that are today. And mm-hmm. that's something that they need to focus on is get, gaining these guys back. Cucking Yemi leaving was huge, and we need to get something like, like him back and maybe more certain, you know. 
I'm very excited yeah. to see how they draft. That's something I'm very excited to see. Well, yeah, exactly. And even like looking at their draft picks, they got Carolina's first this year. They got a second. They got three thirds, two fourths. So they're pretty. They're Aren't pretty they stacked switching? in their they're, early they're part. They're switching Carolina. I don't know if they. Um, uh, is it Montreal getting the the worst or the best? Uh, the the pick was transferred from Carolina to Montreal as compensation for the sheep. Of, okay, I just need to read it. Sorry. Hold on. Oh, that's okay. Uh, where did it show up? All right. Uh, <laughs> give me a few more seconds here. I currently forgot how to use a computer. It's okay. I can have a look too. Um... Uh, go to the 2022 draft. And it's round three. Okay. Uh, there it is. Uh, okay. No, it's just it's just it's their pick because it was in the it was in a what's it called uh, offer sheet. So it has to be their own pick. It can't be from another team. Right. No, I understand that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. So they didn't. The Montreal Canadiens gave their pick to um, Carolina. Oh, the first round pick. Uh, no, the first was traded to Arizona. And that one condition, the better of Montreal or Carolina's first uh, pick. But if either or both are top 10, the Montreal will instead transfer to right. Arizona, the worst of Montreal and Carolinas. But it doesn't seem like both of them are going to be a top 10. So. Well, maybe Montreal will. Yeah, Montreal will be, most likely. So they'll have the Carolina pick. The Arizona yes, Coyotes will exactly. have the Carolinas pick. Yeah, exactly. So basically, they're top 10 protected. Good. So, that's not a bad deal. I think at least they have the first round pick. And Dvorak was uh, a guy that they needed to get after losing on yeah. Deno as well. So And you're still going to have him going forward, too. So Very young and still dependable. So, I'm sure whoever takes up the mantle will be able to... Hopefully reorganize things so he can have a better position there, a better role maybe. Yeah, definitely. I think that's it for the Montreal Canadiens. It was a good yeah. long segment there. It's too too much talking about the halves for me. I can't I do agree. it that long. I agree because I'm a little <laughs> depressed still, a little depressed. 